greatest single cause of atheism in the world today is Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips and walk out the door and deny him by their lifestyle. That is what an unbelieving world simply finds unbelievable. Welcome to Winds of Change. I'm your host and Bible teacher, uh, Keith McKenzie. Uh, this week I'm doing a pastoral uh, and a leadership uh, study called uh, the Bema Seat. And uh, this is all about judgment and rewards. Um, so I, I trust you'll be blessed in this. The first 10 minutes, I'm going to try and just outline for a, a brief introduction, and then we'll get into this, into the, uh, the five crowns that are presented throughout Scripture. But anyway, uh, this teaching was birthed in me uh, when I was in the uh, foyer and we were fellowshipping at a church, and uh, there was some murmuring going on, a little bit of complaining that oh, we can't get anybody to do any help around here and everything like that. And I was speaking to the uh, director of discipleship and I said, well, have you tried uh, teaching them the, the Bema seat? And I kind of got a, a little blank stare, nothing. It was just a flat line, didn't have any idea what I was talking about. But anyway, the principle of the Bema seat, okay, is it's an award ceremony. Like we have the ESPYs, we have the Country Music Awards, we have the Oscars, okay? This is an award ceremony and it's based on our works here and it is also based on not just our work but uh, the motive for which we did that work. So it goes far deeper than um, numbers of uh, you know, seats in a sanctuary, or how many tracks that we handed out, or, or, or how many TV stations we might be on. Whatever it is, God knows the true motive, okay? But the idea, the historical idea behind the Bema seat what is a, in scriptures, uh, in 2 Corinthians and 1 Corinthians, it's mentioned as the, the judgment seat. Pilate sat on one, Herod sat on one, and the, the idea we want to communicate here today is that God is our ultimate judge, all right? In this judgment seat, the Bema seat is not to be confused with the great white throne. Bema seat is for believers and rewards. The great white throne is judgment, condemnation, where it is meted out and you're either at this one or you're at that one. So this is for believers, and this also should be an encouragement and, and designed to uh, teach the, the church that it's not just, you know, one and done when you get saved, that there's work to be done on the Lord's behalf. Salvation is a free gift, all right, but we are created under good works, and James says faith without works is dead. So there's a balance here that um, we're saved by grace, but we're also created under good works because there's, there's work to be done for the kingdom. And it's not just for the staff and the lay people and the people around the church and the ushers. There's other work to be done, communicating the gospel, sharing, praying. If you can't do anything, there's the ministry of intercession, which is people praying for people, people we never ever see, and they're gonna get great rewards for the work that they've done in laboring in prayer. But the idea of the Bema seat is the, um, an Olympic judge, okay? Back in, in the days that this was, the cultural relevance is that the, the Olympic judge would have a seat that would be elevated so they would have a good view of the games, and this judge would judge who was coming across the line, first, second, third, and that judge would be the one who meted out the rewards, the gold, the silver, and the bronze. And so um, today we have timing systems and stuff like that, but on the, our heavenly judge, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ, he will judge us on how we've run the race of faith as outlined in Hebrews. 
all right? And, you know, they talk about striving for a crown. You know, don't strive, the apostle said, don't strive for a crown that perishes, but strive for one that endures. These are eternal rewards that we get. Because some people, quite frankly, they just, they're not even sure what heaven's all about. It's, it's a place that um, everybody assumes that they're going to, but they don't really understand what it's about or some people might have the idea you remember the 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 pictures of uh the cherub just sitting on the cloud like this you know or one cloud one harp bloom, 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 you know for every believer no it's not going to be that way at all heaven is going to be awesome heaven is going to be about god opening up the infinite god to a finite man just revealing I believe just one facet of who he is. It talks about, you know, that he might uh, reveal himself to us in the ages to come, the exceeding riches of his glory for those that love him. And we're going to be part of that. It's very exciting. But the judgment seat, all right, it's God is high. He is, he is the most high. He is high and lifted up. And it says in 2 Corinthians uh, 5, and let me go ahead and read it right out of scriptures, okay? And it says, um, the judgment seat of Christ, all right? I'm going to just back up a little bit into uh, 5 verse 1. It says, for we know that if our earthly house, our body, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, that's our upgrade in the heavens, all right, and that says, uh, a house n not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with the habitation. That word is okotarion, which we have from heaven. It's what we, if you're a Christian, this is what you groan, this is what you earn for to be in heaven. God has put eternity in the hearts of believers, in everybody, really. And it says, um, if indeed we have been clothed, we shall not be found naked, okay? For we are in this tent, okay, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed that, that mortality might be swallowed up in life. Now he who has prepared us this very thing is God. And it says we also have the Spirit as a guarantee. That's his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It says we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in this body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, pleased, well pleased rather, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Verse 9, the judgment seat of Christ. It says, therefore... Make it our aim, okay, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him, all right? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, all right? And it says that each one may receive things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad, all right? Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men... Do we persuade men? But we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your conscience also. But anyway, we have right there, he says we are, you know, the, the, he talks about the terror of the Lord. That is, in, in Proverbs, it says the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. All right? There's certain things you wouldn't do in your house growing up and in your bedroom you wouldn't do because you didn't want your dad to see you, all right? But it also says that God sees all things. He's that judge. He's high and lifted up. He sees how we're running this race of faith, and he wants to bless you. And if you stick around for the back half of this study, I'm going to open up and show you some more scriptures on this and the crowns that we have that eventually in Revelation 4.10 as the picture of the church there, slaying their crowns, casting their crowns before the Lord. But anyway, there will be a day when there's no more tears, when God gives us the rewards for eternal life. We hope you're blessed in that.